In this short lesson, we're going to talk about protons and atomic number, which are two things that are super important for understanding atoms. This video is part of my short course on everything that you need to know for the chemistry section of the TEAS exam. You can find a link to the full course in the description below this video. Okay, so let's start with a little bit of review to bring us up to speed. First off, atoms. These are tiny particles that make up everything. And there are different kinds of atoms called elements. If you look at just one atom and you zoom in even closer, you'll see that it has a particular structure. Atoms are made of even smaller particles called subatomic particles. Protons and neutrons can be found in the middle of the atom uh, in an area called the nucleus, and electrons are found outside the nucleus organized into energy levels or shells. Now, for the rest of this lesson, we're going to focus pretty much entirely on protons. Now, here's one of the reasons why protons are so important. It's because the number of protons in an atom determines what element it is, tells us what element it is. Let's look at what this really means. We've talked about how there are different types of atoms, and these different types of atoms are elements. This list is just a few. For example, this pure copper ring would be made of copper atoms, or a grain of table salt is made of a combination of sodium and chlorine atoms. Okay, but what makes an atom a copper atom? And what's the difference between a copper atom and, say, a chlorine atom? What makes one element that element? Well, fundamentally, it's the number of protons in their nucleus. Here's that copper ring made of copper atoms. Now, every single one of these copper atoms has 29 protons in the nucleus. And in fact, every single copper atom in the universe has 29 protons in the nucleus. These two rules over here are simple but essential, okay? If an atom has 29 protons, it's copper. And if an atom doesn't have 29 protons, it's not copper. Simple as that. The same rule is true for every element. Here's some carbon or charcoal that would be made of carbon atoms. Exact same deal. Every single carbon atom in this charcoal and in the universe has six protons in the nucleus. Now, you may be wondering, how do we know that? How do we know that, for example, every copper atom has 29 protons and every carbon atom has six protons? Well, for that, we have to look at a chart called the periodic table of the elements. And here it is. The periodic table of the elements is, well, it's a chart or a table that organizes all the elements. There are over a hundred elements in the universe and on this table. And each element has its own little square. We'll talk about this in much more detail in another video. The periodic table gives us important information about each element, including the number of protons that it has. So let's take a closer look. The square for carbon is right here. And if we zoom in on it, we'll see that it has a couple important pieces of information. There's the element name, carbon, right here. And then there's the element symbol, or abbreviation. For carbon, it's the letter C. You'll see there are two numbers on the square. The larger number is usually found at the bottom, and that's called the atomic mass. We're not going to worry about what atomic mass is for right now. Just remember, the larger number is the atomic mass, usually on the bottom. Now up here, the smaller of the two numbers, that's the one we're going to focus on. This is called the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons that an element has in its nucleus. So for example, we said that every single carbon atom in the universe has six protons, and there you see carbon on the periodic table is atomic number six. Six protons, atomic number six. 
And of course, this is true for every element. So if you want to know how many protons are in any element, you just look up the square on the periodic table and you look at the atomic number. Hydrogen here has an atomic number of one, and that means that every hydrogen atom has one proton in the nucleus. And here's an oxygen atom with, well, you guessed it, eight protons in the nucleus. Now, as you can see, you usually need a periodic table to find out an element's atomic number. Okay, well, this presents a bit of a problem because you may know that the T's doesn't give you a periodic table for the test. So, some people say, aha, you need to memorize the whole periodic table if you want to do well on the chemistry section. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. They're just trying to scare you. They don't know what they're talking about. Do not listen to this. The T's doesn't give you a periodic table for the whole test. That is true. But for a particular question, the T's may give you a periodic table square or a small section of the table or even the whole table if you need it for a particular question. So you don't have to worry about memorizing the whole table. Don't listen to anyone who tells you that you need to do that. Don't listen. So let's get a little practice with answering some straightforward questions before we look at a couple T's questions because the T's always likes to try to make things uh, trickier and more confusing. Okay, so let's start here. What element has 33 protons in its nucleus? Well, to answer this, we'd look at the section of the periodic table here, and we'd look through all the atomic numbers, and we'd find the element that has an atomic number of 33. And here it is, arsenic, AS, atomic number 33, 33 protons. How many protons are in the nucleus of a barium atom? Well, the symbol for barium is Ba, it's right here. I know it's a little small on the screen, but you'd be able to see the squares very clearly on the T's. So Ba right here, atomic number of 56, which means there are 56 protons in every barium atom. And finally, an atom has 17 protons in its nucleus. What element is it? Okay, we look through the periodic table again to find atomic number 17. There it is, chlorine, atomic number 17, 17 protons, okay? It really is that simple. Now, let's look at some examples of how the T's is gonna ask questions about protons and atomic number. As I always say, they like to mix things up a little bit and try to make things trickier than they need to be. Here we go. Which of the following statements is true about mercury? And they give us the periodic table square. Let's look at the choices one by one. Okay, choice A states that mercury has an atomic mass of 80 AMU. Okay, 80 is up here, but that's the atomic number. It's not the atomic mass. Okay, so this is false. Cross it off. Choice B says that mercury's symbol is ME. Well, come on, that's a really easy one. The symbol for mercury is HG. Now, HG is a little weird for mercury, but some of the symbols on the periodic table are like that. They're kind of weird, and we talk about that in another video. Anyway, B is wrong, so cross it off. Choice C says there are 80 protons in the nucleus of every mercury atom. Okay, well, remember what atomic number means? It's the number of protons in the nucleus. This defines the element. So mercury always has 80 protons in the nucleus. This is our correct answer, but let's just take a look at D to be sure, okay? And it says mercury has an atomic number of 200.59. That's the number down here. Remember we said we have these two numbers. The bigger number usually at the bottom is atomic mass, not atomic number. So D is wrong just like A was, and that means that C is definitely our correct answer. Every single mercury atom in the universe has 80 protons in the nucleus. One more. Which choice represents an atom of aluminum? And we're given a small section here at the periodic table. Well, this might seem a little scary because all of the choices list protons, neutrons, and electrons. 
And we haven't talked about neutrons and electrons in much detail yet, but the tease is full of tricks and shortcuts. For this question, the neutrons and electrons are just there to trick you, okay? They don't matter. Remember, it's the number of protons, the atomic number that determines the element. Aluminum, which you can see right here, has atomic number 13. So every aluminum atom has 13 protons. Simple as that. Ignore everything else. 13 protons, there it is. All the others are wrong. Choice B. Okay, so that wraps it up for protons and atomic number. In the next lesson, we'll look more closely at electrons, ions, and ionization. And we'll introduce you to our pet cat and see how this helps you remember some important vocabulary for the T's. We'll see you there.